In a previous video this week, I already covered some of the policy issues related to what Jerome Powell said during the FOMC press conference this week. And of course, the, the Fed decided to lower its target federal funds rate by another 25 basis points. Uh, and yeah, we can get a sense of what the Fed is thinking about the economy from that. However, there was a political issue that came up during the press conference as well. And that was raised by a couple of different reporters who asked Powell about the prospects of him resigning if the new president, Trump, asked him to resign. And on this, uh, Powell was uh, surprisingly intransigent, uh, basically asked, would you resign if Trump asked you to? And Powell said no, followed by silence. Like, this was pretty aggressive in his response. And then a later uh, a few moments later, a, another reporter asked if Powell thought that he could legally be demoted, that is, taken out of the chairmanship but still left on the Board of Governors, uh, or just removed all together. And uh, Powell just said very sternly that uh, this was not permitted under the law. And that's it. Silence. So clearly he was trying to present a very strong political message here, which was, uh, I can't be gotten rid of and I'm not leaving. Uh, this is this is interesting that uh, he wants to send this message. It seems like he's kind of uh, picking a fight, maybe, even with the administration and certainly seems to believe then that the political position of the central bank is uh, very solid, which, of course, is problematic and something that should concern us, that uh, the central bank seems to, to think that uh, it's just shouldn't have to care what the elected officials in the government think. But they get away with this because they've managed to promote for many decades this this myth and this idea that the Fed requires independence, that the Fed has uh, true independence, and that somehow by exercising this independence, the Fed fights back against the regime to control inflation and to, and to do what's right in accordance with uh, economic uh, scholarship. This is, of course, all nonsense and has always been nonsense. And just to address a couple of the issues, first of all, the Fed uh, has never really been independent. This was clear in law explicitly in the first 30 years of the Fed. Right in, in the early years of the Fed, uh, <clears throat> the Secretary of the Treasury, as well as the Comptroller of the Currency, they sat on the Fed board. So uh, there was a clear line from the White House to the Fed then. In '35, they got rid of that. But that was two years after uh, the president, Roosevelt, got rid of the gold standard by executive order and ordered the Fed to turn over all of its gold. Uh, so uh, <laughs> there's there's no Fed independence to be found there. We also note that whenever wars come up, the Fed always dutifully does what it needs to do in order to ensure that uh, it's funding the federal government. During World War I, the Fed made all of these loans to banks so the banks could purchase war bonds. During World War II, the Fed pegged the interest, interest rate so that uh, the central government could uh, do tons of deficit spending without interest rates skyrocketing, as they would have without Fed intervention. It wasn't until 1951 that you even got this de jure idea that uh, the Fed needs to be this autonomous body. But in practice, that's never even really been true. The Fed always has shown up whenever the federal government needs it to, to fund huge deficits, as it did in the 1970s, which, of course, uh, ended up with lots of inflation. And then, of course, since 2008, it's been just nonstop Fed intervention, tons of Fed power given to it by the federal government. I mean, the Fed has more independence now than ever, uh, one could argue, because the, uh, the Congress has just handed over so much power to the Fed in terms of the Fed just buying up assets, deciding for itself what to do and what policies to intervene. The Fed, however, would have you believe that Fed independence means that uh, the, the Fed is demanding uh, some sort of uh, fiscal responsibility then from, from the federal government. It's just completely untrue. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. So why does the Fed want independence? 
Well, the Fed wants independence so the Fed can serve the Fed's interests. The Fed wants independence so the Fed can serve the banker class, so the Fed can ensure that the banking cartel receives its bailouts, that regulation exists to keep out competition, uh, like, for example, uh, cryptocurrency. And the Fed wants its people in charge. The banking class wants its people in charge. So, of course, it's going to respond aggressively and uh, without any sort of uh, cooperation to the idea of someone like Trump removing people from the Fed without the Fed's approval, especially since we know that uh, Trump had tried to appoint people that the Fed hated, uh, like Judy Shelton, earlier on. So that's the real reason. The Fed's just protecting its power and its power base, which is the banker class. The Fed certainly isn't trying to uh, protect its independence so it can do what's responsible in terms of economic policy. That's just complete nonsense. Really, of course, what should happen is Congress should go in and teach the Fed a lesson. Congress should go in, rewrite the law to fire Powell, make it easy to get rid of uh, central bank uh, presidents, central bank uh, chairmen, whoever. And uh, uh, Congress should just reassert its control. Now, of course, Congress should overall abolish the Fed, but even if the Fed doesn't have the gut, or even if Congress doesn't have the guts to that, they should go in, they should uh, get rid of the power of the Fed to purchase any assets that would really rein in the Fed in terms of its ability to inflate, its ability to manipulate interest rates and asset markets, which, of course, it does just all the time now, completely unrestrained. And, of course, what else should it do? It should get rid of the dual mandate as well, because the Fed always uses that dual mandate, that, that second part of the mandate to maximize employment. That's just an excuse to inflate. Uh, and the Fed just does it all the time on its own because the Fed functionally, in many ways, has independence. The, the reality is that when the Fed wants independence to inflate, the Fed uh, exercises its independence. When the Treasury wants the Fed to help the Treasury inflate for its own purposes, the Fed will, will come happily help the Treasury. So everywhere we look, the Fed's either inflating to help itself, it's regulating to help the banker class, or it's intervening to help the Treasury. Nowhere in that equation is the Fed doing uh, something to make the central government more fiscally responsible or to restrain, restrain state power. That's just not what the Fed does. The Fed wants power, and that's why the Fed wants to be able to ensure that it controls who governs the Fed. And that's all that's going on here. And so we'd all probably be better off if Congress stepped in and said, hey, banker class, we're going to teach you a lesson and we're going to show Jerome Powell, who's boss. You know, that is the elected government that's supposed to really run the federal government and not these shadowy technocrats like the central bankers. Of course, that's unlikely to happen, but that's what should happen. The Fed should be put in its place. <laughs> 